welcome to the Mad About You podcast. This is a knitting podcast and this one is the episode where I recap my visit to Europe and the yarn stores I visited. Hi. So um, I've just finished my yarn tour with Pauline who is, I don't remember exactly her business name, I'll insert the title down the bottom. Um, she is a knitter, instructor, designer, yarn tour guide. Um, so yeah, that was really great. I spent the majority of the afternoon with her. We met at just after one and I stayed with her until about 5.45, which is generally longer, but we were having a really nice time. And she's also teaching a class at Lil Weasel, Weasel, um, which is one of these shops that we visited on our trip today. So um, I found out about Pauline and the tours through Christy Glass of Christy Glass Knits. Um, and I decided that that would be my little splurge for the trip. So... Um, what I'm going to do is go through a little bit of what I bought, maybe talk a bit about each of the, or the few shops that I did go to. Um, some I spent more time at than others. Um, but I'll actually show you the Scotland yarn that I bought, which I haven't done anything with, but I need it to pack everything anyway. So, um, yeah. Now I won't, don't remember some of the shop names and they're all on my phone, which I'm recording this on. So. Um, if I remember, I'll put them on the screen, but I'll definitely write a little um, post below this video with the um, places that I went to and what I bought. So the first thing I bought in Scotland was um, this yarn here. Um, and so it is double knitting, so eight ply. Um, and it's new Lanark wool and textiles. And it says it's new Lanark mills in United Kingdom. Um, I believe it's a Scottish company but I could be wrong um, so I bought two skeins of that mostly um, it's yeah DK like I said and it was to make a beanie um, I think that's what I kind of had decided would be the best thing to do with some of the yarn I wanted to buy to support local and also buy some stuff where I was um, the next place I visited was Ginger Twist Studios which is a little yarn shop in downtown in Abbey Hill um, in Edinburgh this, sorry, the previous one was on Victoria Street, which is Diagon Alley, if you're a Harry Potter fan or one of the inspirations, allegedly, for Diagon Alley. Um, and then I went to Ginger Twist, which is in Abbey Hill, like I said, and I bought this little pin, which I think was like, it's focusing on my face, about two pounds, maybe. Um, so I bought that, and then I also bought some West Yorkshire Spinners, which is not a Scottish brand, but it's a it's um in the it's a United Kingdom brand and this is a hundred percent Shetland wool so um, it's actually quite true to color so this is like a nice um, it's called Olaberry and this one here is Lerwick um, and I didn't really have a plan but I think I'm gonna make a pair of feral um, mittens or color work mittens so I have a couple of yarns that I've already got set aside for something like that but mittens with a matching beanie I think would be really lovely. Maybe I'll make gloves, not sure. So um, those two or those four skeins was my purchases um, in the United Kingdom. And so yesterday I arrived in Paris, um, did some sightseeing, did a bit of that this morning as well. And then I met up with Pauline for my tour. Um, and so the first shop we went to was um, called... I did it? Oh, I did buy something there, actually... Um, this, I think it's pronounced La Drogerie. I've just butchered that, but anyway, um, so that's them and they have shops all over, pa all over France. Um, but the one I went to was the one in Paris and it's actually quite close to my hotel. So I knew that Lil Weasel was quite close, but then this one is also very close. And that is the shop where you walk in. I, I did take a photo, so um, I'll pop those in. But you walk in, you see all the yarn on kind of on display, and then you go and choose it to knit with. Um, and they wind it off onto a cone for you. So I was a little bit overwhelmed, and that being the first place, I looked at my Ravelry queue, and I really didn't, like, I should have planned for this better. And I kind of, in my mind, I did. And then, anyway, after La BNMA, I was like, Oh, should I remember what I wanted to buy something for? So anyway, that's okay. Um, and what I bought from that place um, was this here. So it's mohair. I think it cost me about 16 euro. So I think 
that's almost $30 Australian. Um, and I didn't realise at the time because I thought, oh, I'll make another Kobuk hat or another um, kind of fluffy um, colourwork hat. Sorry, not colourwork. Um, hat with a mohair. Um, but this is like DK weight mohair. And if you can see, the individual strands are quite fluffy. So this was 100 grams, which I think is far too much. Like for what I wanted, I thought I only needed 25 grams. But this is 100 because it's DK weight um and i got a little explanation it's all in french so that doesn't really help me at all but i can probably google translate but that is what i got um so the color is blue opal and it's kid mohair and so it's 90 percent kid mohair and 10 percent polyamide so like hold it together stuff um yeah so i really like that i'm really happy with that purchase i kind of thought i'll make yeah like i said another kobuk but don't know what i'm going to do with that which is kind of crap because i was trying to be really intentional with my purchases but i think i will probably still make another kobuk but instead of doing dk weight i will um, modify the pattern and do it with a fingering because i think i have a color and stash that'll look really nice with this or just like a gray thick yarn um or even i can do maybe like a cow or whatnot. I am conscious that kid mohair can be like a little bit, it will be very warm um, and also a little bit scratchy. I know that I've had some issues with mohair in the past. Um, so yeah, that was that. The next shop we went to was Lil Weasel, which is pronounced much more French than that, but this is the bag I got. And so from here, I looked at a lot of their hand dyed yarn, but they didn't have a massive selection of colours that jumped out at me. Um, and also they had trailers, which I've seen but never bought before, but I just wasn't feeling it. And I had been like, I want to purchase something. And Pauline was like, don't feel like you have to. Um, so anyway, I ended up, so that's there. You can kind of see where they are. And the two metro stops. Is that going to focus? Maybe. Yeah. Let's see here. So give them a follow on Instagram. I do. It's still trying to find my face. Anyway, the yarn I bought, which I bought for a beanie, are these three here. So two pink tweeds and a kind of like a bluey, duck egg blue, grey. Um, so my thoughts, my plan is to make a beanie and I'll do a calf, like a, um, a brim in this grey colour and then the rest of the hat in this. So these were 50 gram balls. Um, it's super tweed, so I think it's a chunky, so it's 95% wool, 5% mohair. Um, it's machine, it's, uh, super wash wool, so it is machine washable. And I just really liked the colour pink and the flecks that are in it, or the nips in the, um, in the tweed, so, and that's it here. So it's actually a, Fonti is a French brand, um, so I tried to, oops, sorry, tried to buy French. French yarn where possible. Um, so that was that purchase. The next place, we went to a couple of yarn shops which I didn't purchase anything from. Uh, yeah. So this man here, Le Tricoteurs Volants, maybe. Sounds his. It's hard to do that for you. Oh! <laughs> Um, he had some really nice stuff. It looks like he does knits a lot of lace himself. Um, there was some beautiful lace shawls, but I'm not really a lace knitter. So, um, yeah, he had some French brands that I'd kind of seen before in other shops and I wasn't really, nothing was jumping out at me, so I didn't purchase anything there. And then the next shop we went to um, is this one here. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. But that was a really nice shop in the 5th arrondissement. Um... Yeah, and they had actually a special on cashmere, but I wasn't really in the market for any cashmere, so I didn't buy anything. Um, but it was a really beautiful shop, just a really simple, like, kind of back wall behind the till. Um, and then a side wall, which had some more French yarns, which I think are a little bit more affordable. They're like six euro a ball, maybe. Um, 
and yeah they were great but nothing again jumping out at me and also I knew the next stop was La Bien Ame and which was the final shop um, of the visit and I was kind of saving my money for there so um I what did we do oh we went to one more I can't remember the name but it's um it's like a really common French not a luxury brand apparently it's like what a lot of people learn to knit with um and it was really cute I saw some like a really nice jumper um but I think it's mostly actually it was less acrylic there than I thought that there would be um which was good I guess it, but you know there's a place for everything and there was definitely a type of yarn for everything there so that was pretty good um I didn't buy anything that was kind of just like as a out of interest sake for me um and then finally on to La Bien Ame so this place which was that kind of where I was really looking forward to going to I can see a reflection and I don't know if that's reflecting for you guys as well. And they're in the 13th arrondissement. Um, so we started at the shop, which is down here. And then I finished my tour at the tea shop up here. And the tea shop, oh, we'll get to that in a second, I guess. Um, so overwhelmed is probably how I first thought of it. I didn't take any photos inside the shop. I really regret doing that, not doing that now. Um, but yeah, so it's just aesthetically really pleasing. Everything was um, in white shelves and like I've seen it before and I'll might, if I can find a photo on the Instagram, I'll insert a photo here. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. So it was like kid mohair or like a particular type of mohair, some form of sock yarn. Oh no, the next kid mohair, kid silk mohair. Then there was like cash merino, sock, kind of all your fingering weights different types sport weight and then as you go around there was like dk aran weight and a bit of chunky as well um so i was like looking through don't know what to make what do i want to buy um but i ended up settling on three sock yarns oh this is cash merino this one because i really liked this color but i couldn't find it anywhere else so it's actually looking more pink than it's really reflecting off the pink table. Um, so this one here is Cash Merino. And the colour is... Oh, it's called Madeline! I didn't even notice. <laughs> How perfect. I just picked that out. I was like, yep, love that. So that was the first one. I saw it, this. Um, and then the next one I saw is this one here, which is Euro Sock, I think. Oh, merino superwash sock and this is winterfell which is one of her really popular colors it's kind of like it's a dark tealy blue i'd say mostly teal but with a bit of sorry mo like mostly a darker tealy color um and then finally this one is also merino super sock and it's dire wolf okay so i chose two game of thrones colors and one named after me hmm. anyway so these three together i think are going to become one of andrea Mary's newest shawls um but I also have a few other three coloured shawls that I really want to make. So um, they're just not in my queue. Because I try to keep my Ravelry queue as like things that I have yarn for and I have a plan for. Um, as opposed to things I like. Oh my god, why did I not look at my favourites? I have a folder of favourited things. Oh my goodness. Anyway, that's what yarn fumes will do to you. I got a little bit overwhelmed and didn't even think about that. But that's okay. So these ones are for myself. And then for my friend Robin, who wants to make an Elton cardigan, I also came with a shopping list. And she wants to make her Elton out of this one. So two skins of Cash Merino in the Sentoki colorway. Um, and then one of the Mohair Silk, which is 500 yards per 50 grams. So this is this here. So it's the same colorway. Obviously, one's just on Mohair and the other one is on, what did I say? Cash Merino. Um, so they bought these for, for um, Robin, and then I was tossing her between this tote bag and buying an actual La BNMA bag. So I decided on buying this one, which is kind of like a deep tote. Um, and then when she was packing up my order, she put in this one as well. So I think my gift to this one, not so sure. 
kind of feel selfish, but at the same time, yeah. Um, and then a bonus for you people who may come here if you are not European. Um, I have qualified, which means I spent enough money, to get my tax back. So I need to make sure I do that at the train tomorrow find a place so you just register your passport details with the shop they print you a couple of different receipts and then um you can get your tax back so my tax back is like 30 something euro i think or maybe 23 euro that probably makes more sense um and yeah that means that i basically got a scanning channel for free so that's pretty good um and also like i was wondering that because at Stephen and penelope in amsterdam where i'm going next they have a tax-free like discount or tax-free code if you're shopping outside of the eu so i didn't know how that applied if you're shopping in store but apparent i guess it will hopefully be the same um because i intend on buying some yarn there um yeah so look i'm not gonna lie the tool with pauline was not exactly cheap the more of you there are the cheaper it is um i think it's like the same price like total for two people she sent me but obviously that was just me um so yeah it was good like definitely worthwhile I mean I could have found Lil Weasel and that first shop by myself because they were very close to where I live um, where I've been staying and I like to be honest the way because I knew I'd booked in the tour I spent yesterday after I arrived um on a tour of the city and then yesterday evening I did a or I finished off on a bus tour had some dinner came back, wrote in my travel journal, and then went to bed. I've been pretty tired. Um, Travelling kicks your butt sometimes. Um, and I obviously knew I had this in plan. So if I hadn't have had the tour, I would have probably done a little bit more research and done it myself. But it was really easy to have someone who knew the way, where to get off the metro. Um, and she was good. Like, she offered, um, if I wasn't good with all stairs, that we could catch the bus, but it would be a different route. And if you're into sewing, she can show you sewing shops and all of that. So... Um, yeah, if you want a little splurge, uh, let me know. I don't want to give out her prices without, you know, her permission, I guess. So if you do want to know, you can send me a message here on Ravelry and I'll tell you how much I paid for my trip. Um, but yeah, I think, like, I told a few people I was doing it and, like, when you figure out how much that is in Australian dollars, they're like, what? But, Yeah. I think it was worth it for me at least if you definitely if you've got the means and you're on a time limit it's it's definitely worth it she's a local designer like I said she teaches knitting classes so it's definitely um, you're helping her and we had a really lovely time um, and then we finished off sorry at the tea shop so La Vos there I think anyway it's not set I didn't say it right but essentially it is the tea shop which was the original La Bien MA before they opened up the new studio um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to see if I've got an address for it, but I, I don't. I'm um, not handy. So, yeah, so I had a cup of tea and a biscuit, which I shouldn't have had, but um, it was delicious, mind you. Um, and so they have La Bienname yarn in the shop, and they also have West Wool, which is cool. But obviously, I said I'm just going to Stephen and Penelope, so I didn't buy any from there. But it was actually nice to see it and touch it before I get there so that on the train tomorrow to Amsterdam, I can actually do a little bit of... Um, Ravelry research. There's a few patterns I think that I would like to um, make, so I'm interested in maybe buying a jumper quantity or a sweater quantity of that um, in a particular colour. And now that I know I can get my tax back, well, I think I can get my tax back. I'll clarify that when I first get there. Um, I might be inclined to spend a little bit more money. Um, so yeah, I'm just rambling on at this point. Um, yeah, my yarn tour has been excellent, um, and yeah definitely worth it if you have the means and if not there were some beautiful things paris is a lovely city that i wasn't um like super keen to come to before i guess and i definitely want to come back um now i apologize if the sound quality is not that great i did pack my microphone but i can't find it anywhere and you can kind of see the mess that is my suitcase um my next couple of days i'm staying in a hostel so i need to actually pack up my stuff properly so that i can manage to um get into my bag well at the moment like everything's strewn everywhere but obviously I'm not gonna be able to do that the next couple of days so yeah thanks for listening to me ramble on um I guess I don't know maybe this will be its own video or I have been vlogging a little bit so you'll see a little bit of Paris before and I'll put some pictures in um 
yeah it's been great and i look forward to talking to you again soon hey uh welcome to the next part of the vlog so i got home two days ago i came home with a cold if you can't notice yeah so um Stephen and Penelope, I walked in and kind of like La Pianemi, I was a little bit overwhelmed at first. Um, but in a totally a good way. There, you walked in, there was some LBA on the wall, down some steps, there was West Wall on the left. And then a whole lot of different brands, uh, European brands, so Ching Fibre, Undercover Otter. <coughs> I, got, I bought from that brand, I can't remember what it's called. Garnsaw. I think that's what it's called. Garn, yeah, Garnsaw. And um, then plenty, 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 plenty more. And then that walk. Life in the Long Grass. Um, some really cool brands. So <clears throat> that was um, really nice. And I arrived just after six, and I didn't choose my yarn to pay for until almost just after seven. So I walked around for like 45 minutes. Um, I wanted to be intentional with the yarn that I purchased because I knew I was probably going to spend quite a bit of money and I didn't want to just be buying single skeins willy nilly like I usually do when I go somewhere. So um, I had my Ravelry up and just like scrolling through, having a look, and I had planned on buying some West Wool for the Mystery Knit Along, but I just, I picked up, oh, actually, the reason why was because he has two, Bicycle and Tandem, and I think Bicycle's DK and Tandem might be. Or maybe it's the other way around. Anyway, uh, one's a four ply, one's a DK, or like fingering weight and DK. And the colour that I really, really, really was drawn to in the fingering wasn't available at all. It had already sold out. So that was kind of disappointing. Um, and then I found another shawl pattern, which I took a photo of. And I would like to make that in the future, but it's Aaron weight. So I think I will save that for like a yarn festival and go and find some. I could have bought more La Bienname, but I was just like, you know what, I'm here to spend money in Amsterdam on European dyes that I haven't um, already bought stuff from. So, anyway, shall we go through my purchases? So, like I said, I walked around for many, 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 many minutes, and I did end up buying quite a bit here, more than I did at La Bienname. Um, So, the first thing I decided was um, that I have wanted to make an eyeball shawl for a really long time. Um, if I can remember, I'll insert a picture of the eyeball shawl here. Um, so I found these two colours, um, and so it's the brand is for Valborg. I've just put to that, I'm sure. But it's the wool isn't necessarily from Amsterdam, but it is a hand dyed, especially for Stephen and Penelope. Um, so this colorway, it's in the merino swirl, which is 80% merino superwash, 20% nylon. And what's the fuzz about is this colorway. And I really liked it because I like cream and I like pink. And it's got pinks and purples and browns and a bit of yellow. Um, and yeah, so I picked up one and you need two colors, um, of two of the same for the sclera. I think that's what the white part of your eyeball is called. Um, and then I bought, I found this colour here, which is going to be the, um, uh, maybe that's the sclera. Anyway, the colour bit of, your, of the eye. <laughs> and then finally, this dark colour, which was actually in a bin, out, not like a bin, like a cubby at the back. Um, so, together, This will be my eyeball shawl. Well, that's the plan for now, you know. I buy things with a purpose and then change my mind all the time. Um, but yeah, so that's that. I then wanted to buy some undercover otter. Well, actually, I think what happened next was that I saw this colour from Ching Fibre and it was 12 euro. And I thought, surely that's a mistake because all of the other ones were like 20 euro. But it wasn't a mistake, so I bought it. Um, so this is Melted Suri, it's 65% Baby Suri Alpaca, 25% Superwash Merino, 10% Silk, it's 175 meters and 50 grams, and it's a heavy fingering weight. So what I actually thought this would be really cool would be like um, a Kobuk hat or something that's like, it calls for DK and some, like, and some alpaca, but I thought maybe like a grey, 
um, heavy weight and then this one for um, like the contrast with that beautiful colors in here so it's like it's it's like a mauvey pink with pink fluoro yellow yellow kind of blue um, I don't really know why because like pink is 100% my wheelhouse and I'm always drawn to pink but the other colors not so much but for some reason I was just like yep I need to have this so I bought that one I pulled it out already um was some undercover otter so she had or they had um merino singles which is what I ended up buying and um I think it was like merino sock and there may have been a DK as well so I think I picked out lots of different colors and put colors back all the time and I'm not super certain about this one for the project that I bought these for but I got a cream this fuchsia which is actually one of the colors I picked off first and this colorway is called Cameron this is ghost town citadel and Bruce now I don't really know the the genesis of the names um, but I really liked these ones I kind of liked these together and those together and then I needed a fifth color because I decided I wanted to make the second Avenue wrap by Amy Miller um, and so I, I got this blue I originally like I also had like a really bright orange like a tangerine color um, but I put it back so oh sorry this is called rose rose dove or down maybe I'm not sure it's kind of covered by the price sticker um so undercover order local she's um or well, the dyer but this is a singularities base because it's a single merino single 100% so posh merino single and um dyes not exclusively for Stephen and Penelope but in Amsterdam so I was pretty happy with that it's completely local um, and so after I did that damage, I walked upstairs, I didn't know, which you would have already heard about or are about to hear about, depends on how I edit this, um, which is really cool. And yeah, so I only visited the one yarn shop in Amsterdam. There are a few others, but after talking to Amy um, and also like I wanted to do quite a bit of sightseeing in that particular country or sorry, city. So um, I went to Stephen Telby on the Thursday, which is the day I arrived. <coughs> And so I kind of, I had thought about going back so that I could get some West Wool. My bag was already full at this point, like beyond full. Um, but I decided against it um, just because I um, ended up doing other things like this next day. What did I do? I have to look at my diary. Oh my God, I can't remember. I had a lazy morning and then but I went on the walking tour and then I met some friends, some Canadian, a Canadian lady and some Australian guys and we hung out for most of the day um, and then went out that night which was fun and then yeah and then the next day I did a bicycle tour and a few other things so like just really busy got and saw the most of the Amsterdam city and kind of the outskirts that I could which is really awesome um, and I'll pop some footage, footage in in between here and talking about loop I'll cut some in now um, so then I went to Loop London on my last day in the UK completely um, in London with my friend Kara from work or she used to, we used to work together and um, we it was a bit of a hike to get out there not really but I met up with my uncle my great uncle and his wife and you know then we got out there and um, yeah it's a very quaint shop so there's two levels you walk in um, and there's like kind of your typical wall like white shelves full of yarn which is awesome um, and then they have like stuff for crochet and knickknacks and whatever kind of on the other side of the shop some sock yarn some kind of sale bins and then um, there's an upstairs so there's the cash kind of register section um, and then upstairs was like kind of the heavyweight yarns which was really interesting way to set it out so it's like kind of all fold by fingering down the bottom and then kind of DK worsted iron chunky um, in a wall along up the top um, plus some patterns and whatever it's really really quite shot like a big table in the middle where I guess they have knit night or classes or whatnot so that was really good um, 
so my friend and I ummed and ahed and I ended up walking away with four skeins from this place so um, I want a British wool or like British dyed they're all local to the UK if I could help it so um, I first of all I think I chose this color here which is um, Enon Cottage Yarns which I've always really admired from afar and never would never purchase so this is um, the Hayton four ply colorway is pollen and it's a super fine merino cashmere nylon and um, so the light kind of the sun just moved it's like a it's a gray I'd say it's a green with a gray undertone and it's got some yellow speckles on it and it's quite pretty and then I chose this life in the long grass which I didn't buy from Stephen and Penelope um, and they are this is the fine sock which is um, 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. This is the colorway Harvest and it's a really nice like bright yellowy mustard color. And then finally I got some Uncommon for the Uncommon Thread Tough Sock which is 80% superwash BFL, 20% nylon so it's all kind of like sock yarn. Um, and this one's hand dyed in Britain and the colorway is called Chard. So together these three are going to be oh it's so washed out. I might take a photo and see if that um, works any better. Um, and these three are going to be the Hohi Three Color Cow. So one has cashmere in it, which is nice because it's really close to the face. Um, but I wanted something that had three colors. Now that I look at it, I'm like, oh god, that's going to be very bright against the face. But I think this will be the pop of color, and I will stripe these two. So it's like there are thin stripes, color block stripes, a stripe which is, has lace. And then a big block of colour. Or alternately, I'll strike these two and have this as my block of colour. But I think it would be better if that's kind of the highlight, which sits kind of further down the neck, I think. And the last thing I did, which was kind of my plan, I remembered at the end, was that I wanted to buy a hat, like a DK skein and just make a hat from every place. Instead, I didn't do that. Um, but when I was upstairs at Loop looking at the chain fibre, I found this super soft DK, which is... Superwash Merino, Cashmere and Nylon, 212 meters for 100 grams and it's pink <laughs> and it's called Lullaby so um, it's a DK weight, uh, it's not really true but it's yeah so it's like a soft pink with green and purple and fluoro yellow and like a bit of lavender or periwinkle spots like um, stripes, sorry speckles and Anyway, I really liked it, so I'm going to make a hat. I'm not sure which one yet. I'll just go on Ravelry and search for a DK weight hat pattern. Um, yeah, so that's my haul, which is, I know it's enormous, and I, I kind of feel a little bit silly for how much that I bought. Um, but this year has been a pretty crap year for me, personally, and yarn makes me happy. And also, where I'm here, I can't. By yarn. So the, the plan really isn't for me to use this yarn here. I have some that is with me and I'm still trying to decide what to do with it. And then when I get back to Australia properly next year, I'm going to set up my house really lovely and um, have like a dedicated yarn section and it's going to be um, just a little bit me and for me. So I kind of had already thought about going on a yarn diet. I hate that word. But like I have a lot of yarn, I probably don't need to buy any, I have enough projects in my queue and in my plan to last me a year. Um, so anyway, I guess I'll talk about it more on a podcast when I actually know what my, my thoughts about it are, because I, I have a lot of thoughts going around my head at the moment, and um, yeah, so I guess the only other thing to talk about is I bought um, the backtrack to Stephen and Penelope, so I bought this, um, this tote bag, so it's quite deep actually which has been good because it's had most of this yarn just sitting in it and I used it to carry my stuff around London actually on my last day um and I've never I haven't been a tote person for a long time but uh, I think it's actually gonna be really good I don't necessarily want to use it for knitting stuff I can use it for um, my shopping and and whatever and it's just a really good size um take stuff to the gym and what um I just coughed <laughs> um what was I saying? Tote bags. Oh yeah, so actually most of the places I went to were pretty good actually. So like, um, Stephen and Penelope, they have these little like sock sacks, I guess. It's like a little hessian 
canvas bag, sorry. Um, and you can, like, I think they were six euro each, but if you spent over a certain amount of money, you got one for free. But then that tote bag was 12 euro, and you could, or maybe 14, and you could upgrade. It was 12, it was double. So basically, I just said, oh yeah, don't worry about the other one, and then I'll pay that six euro, and I'll get this tote bag. And that bag has been phenomenal. I did the same thing in Lovey. So yeah, um, overall, my yarn tour of Europe, or of Paris, and Amsterdam, and I guess London, oh, and Scotland, because I did that too, um, was really good. I think, um, yeah, the yarn tour I did with Pauline was really worth the money. Like, I could have done it myself, but um, it was just really easy. I do recommend, um, most places, like, assuming Penelope had no issues, like, with any language barrier, um, La Bienname was great too, like Pauline spoke French so she could, if I had something really confusing to say, she could translate that, but um, overall it was pretty, it was pretty easy everywhere I went. Um, so yeah, definitely if you're in the market for a yarn tour in Paris, look Pauline up, her details are below, I've done show notes already, so that's handy. I just, I've forgotten a couple of the names of the shops I did on the tour with Pauline because I didn't buy anything from there. She did give me business cards, but I've unpacked and I have no idea where they are. So I will try and put all that info in together before I upload this. Um, but thank you for watching and I'll see you with a full podcast in a little bit. Bye.